Hello, my name is Daisy Cordova and my partner's name is Myra Valenzuela. And today we will be talking about how refrigerators work. Before refrigerators were invented, people used to go up to the mountains to grab the snow and use that to cool their food. William Cullen was an inventor in the University of Glasgow who discovered the concept of making things cooler by using a refrigerator in 1748. Although he discovered the concept of using an object to refrigerate things, he did not put his idea much to use. Then in 1805, Oliver Evans, an American inventor, used the concept of creating an object to refrigerate stuff to try to find a certain design that would best fit a possible first refrigerator. Oliver Evans was not successful into making a first refrigerator either, similar to William Cullen. Jacob Perkins, similar to William Cullen and Oliver Evans, used the ideas to create the first refrigerator in 1834, and it was used in a vapor compression cycle. They all had the common idea that how to use a chemical to cool down an insi the inside of a machine. Based off of Jacob Perkins' design on the first refrigerator built in 1834, John Gorey, then an American physician, built the first refrigerator that was able to make ice to cool the air in 1844. Although the designs of refrigerators or the inventions were successful, the way they were created was not successful because they released toxic gases such as ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide, and this caused many fatal accidents because these chemicals leaked from the back of these refrigerator machines. There were three American corporations that wanted to develop a less dangerous or harmful way of creating a refrigerator and allowing them to use a cooling system to discover Freon. The improved development of the refrigerator was, was constructed in a way that a thin tube ran across the back of the refrigerator creating loops that connected to a pump powered by an electric motor. Inside the tubes ran a gas called chlorofluorocarbon or better known as Freon as I previously stated and this chemical was a chemical to replace all the deadly toxic gases that were used in the previous design raid. Freon is a, is a chemical that starts as a liquid and the pump pushes the CFC, also known as Creon, through a lot of coils in the freezer area. There the chemicals turn into vapor and when it turns into vapor it soaks up some of the heat that may be in the freezer compartment. As this process happens, coils get colder and the freezer begins to get colder as well. This causes the refrigerator to be hotter on the back because the pump is pushing all the heat out through the back into the air by removing the heat from the inside. But what they didn't know is that this gas was not toxic to humans but toxic to the Earth's ozone layer. The picture that is now on the screen is a reflection of the previous design that I mentioned in where Freon is going through the pumps that are coiled around in the back of the refrigerator. Refrigerators in the late 1900s used approximately 7% of the electricity in the United States alone. If you compared this percentage to the energy supplied by the hydroelectric energy that was used by other supplies, this caused the U.S. mandate to create a to create a mandate higher efficiency rated to reduce the amount of energy being used because people believed that refrigeration was using too much energy and it would soon run out of resources. As I previously stated, these old refrigerators that were made in the 1900s included a long thin tube in the back that made a loop. 
this loop connected to the pump which is powered by an electric motor. Inside there is what we mentioned earlier as a gas called Freon and due to the fact that this chemical turns into vapor the back of the refrigerator began to turn hotter because it was a reflection of how all the hot air was being pumped out and therefore creating more cooler air therefore creating a more sufficient refrigerator. New refrigerators replace the Freon to avoid damage to the ozone layer and then this chemical that replaced it was called tetrafluoroethane, also known as HFC. When the temperature reaches negative 15.9 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 26.6 degrees Celsius, HFC turns into a liquid. When this process happens, the law of thermodynamics is kicked in. The law of thermodynamics happens to function because energy passes as work, or as heat in this case, and it's put into, our, into the form of a system. Its internal energy changes in accordance with the law of conservation of energy. It is evident that HFC can change into a liquid because it is put into high pressure. When HFC hits a low pressure area, it boils and changes into a gas, which happens to be a vaporization process because what's called an expansion is where the liquid flows. And then through this expansion valve, a tiny, through, well, through a tiny small hole, that liquid is squeezed through. Between the valve and the compressor, there is a low pressure area. And this low pressure area is used to pull ammonia gas out of that side. The inside of the freezer and the entire refrigerator gets cold, be cold because the coils then go through the freezer and regular part of the refrigerator where the colder liquid in the coils pull the heat out of the compartments as pre previously stated. This video containing content from the beginning all the way up to two minutes kind of demonstrates and gives a better visual of how the refrigerator works. To conclude I hope everybody enjoyed this presentation and hopefully you guys got to learn a little bit